Hey, hello, hoi, another dev vlog. Um, it has been a while, two or three weeks, I think, not even sure. Um, yet again, I made progress on my game and uh, I'm here to show you all about it. I made a interactive cutscene, uh, the very first prologue level that you get to play whenever you get this game in about 20 years or so. <laughs> it's uh, not just a cutscene, it's an interactive cutscene, so you also get to play the character a little bit while things are going on. You know, just let, let me just show you the thing, shall we? There we go. It's so busy. There are like multiple Aidens here. The mother is there floating in the air. Fire, meteors, smoke, different eggs. <laughs> yeah, the, the, these are all the scenes that eventually uh, will show up in the scene. And they're now here all together at the same time. So it looks so chaotic. Um, but you know, let me just play it for you. After you skip all these splash screens and the menu, you play the game. And then this will be the very first scene. Uh, it went pretty fast, but she just uh, ignited the fire in the uh, in the little chimney. Uh, she's doing something on the table. I still have to decorate this room, so it looks very uh, empty right now. But I'm gonna put like some plants, some art on the walls. There's gonna be something on the table, some tool that she's working on. Um, and at a certain point, there will be this icon. I haven't created it yet, but there will be an icon here, which says. Um, Press E or space bar to uh, to attack or at least to hatch, to uh, get born. So let's do that. I'm going to just spam space bar. This is actually working, so this is not fake gameplay. Uh, at a certain amount of cracks, uh, the mother goes to the right side. I will probably animate the mother a bit more. So she's like completely in love with the egg that is about to hatch like some heart above her head. Or maybe she will hold her hands like this. Some tweaks here and there. But at a certain point, you will break free. Poof. So cool. Did you see all the particles? I'm so happy with, with those little details. And then you will do your first steps. Isn't it cute? And you can actually move. So you can also go. <laughs> you can go the other way. If you want, you can just spend hours here just walking from the left to the right. Um, and at a certain point, you will just tumble over in a very cute way. Boink. Obviously, the sound effects and the music will complete this scene. But then... Are you tripping again? Oh no, there's a meteor! <laughs> and there's a hole in, this, in, the, in the roof. Mother grabs you and then... Poof. <laughs> and then you wake up so dramatic then you wake up um, in the actual game because this was all a dream that's it this was like a week worth of time for just 45 seconds that's game development for you <laughs> Uh, no, but you know, I had to create all sorts of art. I had to create new animations because I completely forgot about the mother uh, uh, needing to jump with the eggs and Aiden in their arms. I needed to come up with uh, smoke, with fire, with the uh, volcanic uh, bomb that, that goes through the, uh, through the roof. It was quite a learning curve. I had to learn about level states, how to have characters that can be controlled either by the cutscene and by the player. At some point, you know, you want to lock the player input when something happens and then the cutscene takes over. Um, so yeah, it was quite um, quite an interesting adventure so far. And matter of fact, I think I have to refactor a bunch again. I'm going to do that next week. Uh, I'm obviously going to use all the animations and sprites and the, uh, the knowledge that I gained so far. Another detail is that the background, uh, the, the gradient in the background, the blue gradient, it will change to red in just a moment after the first trip, whenever the uh, volcanic bomb goes through the roof. Um, right about now. Whoop. I'm also thinking about adding some multiple volcanic bombs in the background. So for those who missed the initial, uh, you know, roof breaking part, uh, it becomes clear that there's just something going on in the outside, in the outside world. Yeah, and then you wake up. 
I'm not going to go into the details of how I went about it, but the the level basically has a state machine attached to it. Uh, the first state is about the mother moving to the table. The second state is about the interactivity part, uh, you hatching out and the start of the incident. And the third state is the fire spread, the mother saving the, the children uh you know and fading into black and that's basically it so this is not too much of um you know compli complicated code uh that mainly happens in the states itself uh here's the first state there are a bunch of references to the uh to the world objects some of those will get their visibility turned to false at start and then slowly but steady based on timers and the event of the uh, animation players uh, different animations will get started and different uh, things will happen, such as the fireplace uh, igniting itself and so on. At a certain point, you go to the second state of the level. This is a little bit more complicated, but not too advanced. Uh, it pretty much takes care of the, uh, the space bar input and based on the input and the increment of the, uh, the counter, things happen. <laughs> you know, you start to hatch, you're, you're getting born in a way. Then the third one is the mother, uh, you know, trying to save you. And then a lot of fire objects will get shown and will get ignited. Things explode. Super dramatic. One thing that is bothering me currently is the pixel size of the sprites versus the, uh, the world environment. So that's something that I'm going to work on right now. Uh, I want them to be the same, basically. So I have to make the character smaller or go about different zoom levels of the camera. I also tested out making the whole viewport smaller so the world gets bigger or at least the pixel size, but this is too big in my opinion. You will lose a lot of detail in the, in the world environment. So um, I'm gonna go the other way around. I'm gonna make the characters uh, smaller uh, so the pixel size of the world and the characters align with each other. Yeah, getting better at things is so annoying. <laughs> like the moments I finish the whole cutscene, I'm, I'm starting to get uh, bothered by this uh, pixel size thing. Oh well, it's all part of uh, the learning process, I guess. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Feedback is appreciated. Um, I'm struggling a bit with making tutorials at the moment. So the next video is most likely uh, is going to be a devlog yet again. Uh, which is, you know, the game is, has the highest priority, uh, but the tutorials, they, you know, attract most new subscribers. So it's hard to balance those. Uh, let me know if you have some thoughts about that, so we can think about that a little bit. Uh, I'm probably going to refactor this, this whole first scene, uh, complete it, uh, except for the audio and the music. And Maybe then I will make a few tutorials just to get, you know, uh, new folks to the channel as well. And, uh, you know, share some knowledge, which is always nice. With that being said, I see you guys around in the next video or stream. Bye bye.